Hi and welcome to Expondo Gastro Experts. Today we are continuing our equipment cycle and we'll be talking about blenders. My name is Michał Orłowski. Let's have a look. All right, so first, as always, let me remind you the program is streamed live, so the more questions you ask in our live chat, the better we will cover the subject, which today is, as you can see, blenders. I have two blenders on my workbench. Uh, it's actually two very similar devices from Royal Catering. It's the RCBM uh, 2LB and 2LA. So let me just go through some of the details. Uh, I've been testing these two devices for quite a while, very intensively, uh, just to check what they can do and what they cannot do. Uh, so um, I have to say they're pretty reliable and uh, I was really, really happy with them. So let's go through some of the parts. First of all, starting from the top, we have a cap with a special hole in it with a lid, uh, which is great. Uh, the jar, of course, is, has two litre capacity. Uh, there's a measurement there. Uh, in, well, it goes with ounces, it goes in cups, and it goes in milliliters. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so independent of the recipe you're using, because you know cooks are using different recipes uh, and different measurements uh, in the recipes. Uh, so that's kind of cool. You don't have to check it on your uh, mobile. Uh, both the devices, uh, as I said, they're quite similar. Uh, they both work with 1500 watts, uh, you just need to plug them in, in a normal uh, wall socket in order to make them work. Uh, the uh, cord is uh, one meter long, uh, it's quite kind of important uh, for some because you know these are benchtop devices so you need to reach that plug in somehow, so it's good to have that one meter uh, of length. Uh, they rolled up underneath it very nicely, so after service you can just throw them away just like that. Um, and well, blenders, in my opinion, most useful and used devices in a commercial kitchen, therefore it is really important to pick the right one. So let me tell you about a few differences between these two. So this one, this particular one goes up to 32,000 rotations per minute, this one goes with uh, tw up to 26,000 rotations per minute. Uh, the main difference is on the control panel, uh, which is here just on and off button. Then you have the pulse function, obviously, uh, that works for uh, you know both of them. And then you have a manual uh, regulation for the rotation. So you can slow it down and go up to 32, uh, which is the maximum. Uh, on this one, uh, you have a different control panel. So of course, you have the on and off switch, the pulse function. Uh, the pulse function, if you don't know, uh, well, it's, if you press it, you basically switch to straight uh, maximum rotations. Um, uh, it's great if you have like you know uh, really thick textures and you just want to you know bring it up to uh, the speed really quickly and you want to catch to say that's how we call it like you know it, so it catches really quickly. Uh, or if you want to control the blending process and you know you don't want to do a paste, so just you know roughly chop it up. So you use the pulse function just to see what's going on through. Uh, all right, so first of all, let's answer the question. Um, why would I need this or this one? Uh, well, it all depends on your needs, what you'll be doing in your kitchen uh, with those blenders. Um, basically, I always prefer to have a faster blender and then have the option to regulate the um, rotations just you know for thicker uh, substances for instance uh, I like to get slower and then just speed it up gradually uh, I like to have that option uh, but for places that for example like smoothie places um, or juice bars you know really trendy these days when you know exactly how long it's gonna take uh, to blend up a particular drink uh, then of course uh, it's better for you to get this one because you have the option to put 35, 60 or 90 seconds you have the option to set uh, low, medium or high rotations so when you go from between 12,000 and 26,000 rotations per minute of course it goes proportionally uh, low, medium, high so 
Uh, what this gives you, basically it gives you the possibility to turn it on. Uh, you know exactly how long it's going to take to blend it up uh, properly. Uh, you're not wasting any second uh, and you're not risking that it's not going to be blended up. Uh, so you don't need, well, technically, theoretically, you don't need as qualified uh, people working on it. Um, or actually, let me reverse that. Let me take it back. Uh, what it gives you, it gives you the possibility to uh, set something in motion, do something else and come back uh, and always achieve exactly the same result uh, without the risk of you know human error basically that's what it's all about all right so now let me tell you when you think of uh, buying a blender and say what do you need to um, take into account well first of all there's a few things all right so on this example let me put it back together and start from the top so uh, start with this this is very important. Some of the home brands don't have it, but uh, these things tend to be used for uh, purees where you're adding on um, cold butter to emulsify the puree. Or you do dressings where you have to gradually add oil into the dressing in order to combine it and make a really solid emulsion that doesn't split. So if you don't have this, Basically, what you, have, what you need to do, you have to stop blending or you're performing a very risky task of um, taking the lid off. Uh, as I said, the all splashes and everything, you may um, you know, just lose some of the liquid inside and it's just simply dangerous because you're opening it up and then you have a running blade um, you know, where you can put your hand on which, or you know, drop a spoon or whatever. So this way you can keep it running and just add, uh, add uh, some ingredients gradually. So that's actually kind of cool thing. Uh, next thing to uh, watch and uh, to have a look at is this cap. It needs to fit really nicely. It needs to produce a nice seal. It's good when it's rubberized like this one, so it's kind of squishy. First of all, it's easy to clean and maintain. Then again, uh, it really produce a nice seal so that's the thing also uh, for, for instance there's both uh, the same for both of them right uh, the blades let me take this one off uh, it's good to have more than two blades some of the home brands just have two blades which again uh, well it gets the job done but it takes much longer and uh, well, it, well from my own experience I know it doesn't uh, give the same result. So it's good to have four blades or in this case six blades high quality stainless steel. But after service every device needs cleaning. So uh, it, it goes for both of these devices. Uh, it's the same thing on the base. You can release the base. You have arrows with the direction, okay? Which way to open, which way to close. So when you hold the knife, just be careful, it's sharp. And you twist it. You release the whole blade unit. You know, a few rotations there. All right, hang on. So you just take this one out. And you can take the whole blade unit out. This is really important to have as a possibility because first if you're using the device really intensively uh, if you use it frequently on different products acidic products uh, you know really uh, thick textures uh, then these blades eventually even though they're really good stainless steel uh, they will get blunt so you need to be able to sharpen them or if necessary change them out so uh, some home brands don't have it so um, quite frequently actually working in different kitchens I see that uh, you either have a couple of uh, blender bases uh, with the jar broken so it's really also important to check the quality of the jar that it's really thick and solid and you know it doesn't break easily and then again uh, to have the possibility of changing out parts that are moving and are coming in contact with food and uh, they can be exploited. So uh, that's really great. All right, so uh, also very important, uh, let me ch check it on this one, uh, is the possibility again of cleaning. As I said, every device needs cleaning, uh, regular cleaning. 
So um, on home brands, it happens quite frequently that the base is not uh, removable. Uh, and you cannot clean it and the dirt goes underneath it and after some time of usage uh, you will end up with dirt underneath it so you need to be able to clean this bit as well and you can by doing so it just comes off it's just also rubberized you can put it in a dishwasher right so uh, you can clean it out quite easily um, also very important and let me show it to the camera in there there's a Phillips screw let me just show it to you, all right, like this. I don't know if you can see it, but this is the element that gets the biggest abuse. And it's uh, wear, uh, wearing down really quickly, uh, unbending. Like, you know, people haven't, uh, well, humankind hasn't invented a material that, that doesn't wear. Uh, so this actually sometimes after ex extensive use needs replacing so in this case you just unscrew it and just send it back to the producer and there's a huge chance you get it replaced really quickly so that's the things to uh, be taken into account so let me put it back together oh yeah this brings me to another point uh, namely safety <coughs> Safety is a huge thing. It frequently happens, like you know, before, back in the days, that people were just plugging it in, carrying the base around, and as soon as they dropped the uh, equipment down and plugged it in, this started moving because it was turned on. It will not happen in either of these because there's a safety. There's a button here that needs depressing, and there's bolts here on the base of the jar, four of them that go straight into that hole. So, doesn't matter which way you put it on, it will always depress that button so the device will not start working until you put the jar back on. So, that's the thing. All right, hang on a second. Uh, so, these are the things uh, that needs, uh, you, know, you need to have a look at. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether you have the, uh, well, it does actually matter whether it's uh, faster or slower. <coughs> so, basically, you have to just uh, find out what your needs are, what you'll be doing with it, and just basically choose, because there's a slight pr price difference, so it always plays a little role. Um, as, as I said, between 26,000 and 32,000, uh, there's uh, not much visible vi uh, you know, difference for a uh, home user. <coughs> Excuse me. But in commercial, role, uh, commercial use, it plays a huge role. All right. I see uh, there's already questions coming in. So how about we switch into Q&A mode? All right. Jessic, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Will those blenders manage to blend my morning smoothies with a lot of hard seeds? Yes, absolutely, they will. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's the 26 or 32,000 rotations, they will get the job done. They're really powerful devices. I've been, as I said, using them in my kitchens, both of them. Uh, the last six months they've been used and abused in uh, different ways. Uh, so the crushing ice, uh, they, um, I've been making uh, you know, really thick hummus with it. Uh, I've been pureeing peas for a really thick puree, uh, well, pea puree. Uh, I've been doing, I've been doing uh, hot stuff, I've been doing cold stuff, I've been doing juices uh, with seeds and without. Of course, like when you're doing uh, you know, drinks with, with seeds, then uh, obviously you will get a bit of that stone uh, as well in your drink. So just sift it through, uh, but just definitely that we go through the seeds with no problem and uh, at all, like, you know, but no blender will make it, you know, uh, so you can feel it. All right, CCC, give me a dollar price. Uh, well, depending on your market, I can give you the price for the UK uh, market. So for the uh, Mixectana uh, with 26,000 uh, rotations, it's £119. Uh, for the um, RCBM LB, uh, it's uh, £107. So quite similar price. 
you know, only a few pounds difference, but yeah, there it is. Not very expensive. Jessic. Are those blenders available in other colors? I don't like the beige finish, uh, white finish. Yes, actually, if you go in, uh, on the website, expander.com, um, you will find a whole uh, range of these blenders with different control panels and different uh, powers, uh, power usage, and different colors as well. Uh, I believe there's four or five different colors. You have to check the website for, uh, just to make sure, but I believe uh, I like the red one most. So it really looks cool. Uh, for uh, commercial use, however, I mean, you know, I don't really care about colors in the commercial use. Uh, they get scratches all over the place. So, yeah, uh, beige is the uh, universal color, but you can pick uh, the color you like. And uh, they're really colorful, and I've tested them all, so they basically all, they all do the same thing. Um, we have no questions for now, so let me just remind you, we still have uh, our live chat, so if you have any questions, please fire away. Um, if uh, you come up with something uh, and we already finished the program, feel free to send us an email on the address below. There you go. Um, I will answer all the emails individually, or if there's plenty of questions on a particular topic, I will try and make another show out of it. So, uh, just go for it. All right, so, fire away. Uh, otherwise, uh, let me just tell you, uh, both devices work with 230 watt, uh, sorry, volts, so just normal voltage. Um, if it comes to uh, the materials used for the blade, as I said, uh, the company is really proud of the materials they used. Uh, what's also important, uh, talking about the materials, well, it's great quality stainless steel. Uh, the blade unit can be taken apart, so for sharpening or for exchanging, so you don't need to chuck the whole blade unit out. Uh, you can exchange different parts of this thing. Uh, also, if it comes to materials, um, the j blenders, it's BPA free. Uh, some of the cheaper brands, they still use BPA uh, containing uh, plastic, that's uh, bisphenol, bisphenol A, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Uh, basically what it has, uh, whatever you do in your blender, uh, they wear out. So even if you do soft stuff, you st it still gets scratches and uh, microscopic bits of plastic are, are going into your food. So it's really, you know, it's really imperative that you have a really good material for the blender and it's BPA free because BPA is toxic. So this, these do not have it. So that's really great. Uh, what else I can tell you about it? Uh, well, so since there are no more questions and I think I've told you pretty much everything about it, um, again, let me remind you about the email address below, just to drop any questions if something comes up to your mind. Um, also, um, I invite you for further episodes. Today, uh, we still make a, uh, one more episode in German language, so if that's the language you prefer. Uh, tomorrow, we make a, uh, another episode on uh, food trucks with our expert. Uh, it's going to be in Polish, but well, there's, there's going to be subtitles, no worries, later on. Uh, added, of course, uh, and well, just keep track of our program, the program you will find on the website, and for today, I thank you guys, guys very much for watching, I thank you very much for your questions, and I hope I see you next time. Cheers.